When you first see this creature, it may seem to you that this is a flying sapphire. The blue banded bee is as beautiful as this gem. These flying beetles have turquoise stripes instead of yellow. Their huge green eyes resemble emeralds. And their thin brown wings look like layers of cellophane with engraved patterns. Appearance is not the only thing that distinguishes them from ordinary bees. The blue banded ones are singles. They don't move in swarms and don't live in large nests. These beetles like settling in small burrows in the soil or crevices in rocks. Another cool difference between our blue guys and ordinary bees is their unique way of pollination. Scientists call it buzz pollination. The blue bee sits on the flower, holds it tightly, and begins to shake the whole body. It creates a series of small, fast vibrations. This way, the bee also shakes the flower quickly and gently. These movements make the pollen move out of the anther. Then the bee stops and collects all this pollen. Some scientists think these bees prefer pollinating purple flowers. This helps the blue bees blend in with the plant and remain unnoticed by enemies. But this theory hasn't been proved yet. The blue banded bees mainly inhabit the territory of Australia. They are an important element in the agriculture of this country. These bees work with tomatoes, cranberries, eggplants, blueberries, kiwi, and chili peppers. Ordinary bees can't pollinate most of those plants, but their blue relatives can. On a global scale, more than 8% of plants in the world need to be pollinated through buzz pollination. That's why farmers love and protect blue banded bees so much. Crane flies are really clumsy in the air. Their rather short wings are no match for their huge bodies and long legs, so they're slow and it's easy to catch them. Birds and frogs, as well as bats and cats, love them as a treat. The only way they can avoid being eaten is by losing a limb. Their legs easily break off even when nothing touches them. And if you're still unconvinced not to scram and set your house on fire when you see one, consider this. Crane flies can tell you if the water pool you're about to swim in is of good quality. If you see these bugs on or above the water, you're good to go. Even more, fishers often make their bait look like the crane fly larva. Ah, this makes it more appetizing for the fish. But while Googling, you get engrossed with reading up on some other weird and crazy bugs. For example, here's the human face stink bug. Nah, they don't really stink, at least for humans. They give off pheromones that attract other stink bugs, letting them know there's food nearby. The most peculiar feature of it is in the name. A man face stink bug has a face on its back with three black dots drawn in red. The vibrant color of its back warns predators that the bug isn't tasty or even poisonous while the black eyes draw attention from them to the vulnerable head. Saddleback caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch any. Wasps and bees are very similar in appearance. Sometimes they can be difficult to tell apart, but their lifestyle is totally different. Bees are quiet beetles that spend all their time pollinating plants, collecting nectar from flowers, and making honey. We can say that bees are small, powerful trucks, but wasps are racing supercars. They are more aggressive, much faster, and more maneuverable in the air. Their stings are more painful, Yes, they can also carry pollen from one plant to another and feed on nectar, but their main mission is to control the population of insect pests, such as aphids and some species of caterpillars. According to some estimates, wasps managed to get rid of more than 14,000 tons of insects in the UK alone during one summer. Imagine how much they do all over the world. Wasps are dangerous beetles, but among them, there is one kind that is distinguished by its peaceful nature and lifestyle. This is the mud dauber wasp. It also has a black and yellow coloring, but it looks more elegant. A swarm of regular wasps is controlled by the queen, but mud daubers are solitary creatures. They build a small nest of mud in which they live with their children. A mud dauber 
will bite only if it's in danger. Unlike other wasps, these insects only use their venom to paralyze spiders, flies, and caterpillars. Then, they bring them to their nest to feed their children. So don't be surprised if you see a large horde of paralyzed spiders inside the nest. There can be more than 500 bugs in one nest. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the inferno. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Wheatas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snake heads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. The most unfriendly wasp species is the hornet. They are also wasps, but bigger, angrier, and with an even more painful bite. Its bite is one of the most dangerous among all insects. This critter can grow to be the size of a thumb. That's three times as large as a regular bee. Hornets attack in a huge swarm and pose a great danger to any animal. To fight them, people wear thick protective suits that resemble spacesuits. But the worst thing is that hornets invade hives and reduce the bee population. This can lead to a catastrophe on a planetary scale, since bees pollinate more than half of all fruits, vegetables, grains, and nuts in the world. Look at this big buzzing bumblebee. There's something wrong with it. It lands on a flower. And wait a minute, this is not a bumblebee at all. It's some kind of green, orange, beautiful beetle. Oh, now it takes off and looks like a bumblebee again. Meet the pellucid hawk moth. Thanks to its color and transparent wings, it creates the illusion of a bumblebee. The wings of most insects serve for thermoregulation. They warm their body. Other insects have wings that help them fight enemies. A butterfly manages to look like a large creature thanks to the pattern on its wings. Some insects communicate using vibrations created by their wings. Colored wings have many different purposes, but the pellucid hawk moth has transparent wings, and their main function is to avoid reflecting sunlight. These fast-moving transparent wings practically don't shine in the light and tone down the color of the beetle. Thanks to this, when the moth is flying, other insects perceive it as a bumblebee and are afraid to attack it. The most famous blood-dependent species are, of course, mosquitoes. Only female mosquitoes need blood to produce eggs. When mosquitoes fly, they feel the heat, carbon dioxide, and lactic acid in the air. These smells attract the mosquitoes, so they fly to their source, an animal or a human. Then the mosquito lands on its prey and inserts its proboscis into the skin. At the same time, it secretes saliva to prevent clotting. The unpleasant skin sensation you get after the bite is an allergic reaction of your body to the mosquito saliva. Then the female produces eggs and leaves the larva in stagnant water. It could be a pond, a drain, or an outdoor pool. Small mosquitoes feed on organic substances in the water, then grow up and go on their first hunt. Black flies also feed on blood, but they don't do it as carefully as mosquitoes. The female black fly lands on the prey, uses its sharp jaws to cut the skin, and devours its lunch. Fortunately, they don't bother people too much. Their main target is livestock and wild animals. 
Horseflies and deer flies are the real human enemies. Their bite is quite painful. Ordinary flies that live on the street and inside human houses are super annoying and they can feast on your skin without even biting you. Everything they need from you lies on the surface. You secrete sweat, proteins, carbs, salts, sugar, and other chemicals that the fly collects with its proboscis. And of course, it hardly understands that you're a living being and don't want to share your food with it. That's why a fly isn't afraid of you. You probably noticed that some people get bitten by insects more often than others. You could be going for a walk in the park and they get all over you. But your friend walking right next to you wouldn't feel anything. Hey, just means you're a sweetie. Scientists used to believe that some people actually just don't feel it when they get bitten. Their body doesn't have such a strong reaction to mosquito saliva. But recent studies have shown the number of bites depends on genetics and many other factors. Around 10-20% to of people are just more attractive to predatory insects. How lucky or unlucky are they? Mosquitoes use a variety of senses to choose the perfect prey. They have carbon dioxide and humidity sensors. They also distinguish the odors of hundreds of different chemicals released by humans. Each smell has a specific meaning for different types of mosquitoes. There are thousands of nuances and shades of odors that can attract some mosquitoes and repel others. The mosquitoes that are more aggressive like things that ordinary mosquitoes can't smell. Some mosquitoes go for your legs, others like your neck. The food and drinks you consume play an important role in that, too. They change the smell of your skin. The thickness of the skin, the amount of heat released, shades of color, and your blood type – all of that matters to insects. From afar, it may seem that a hamster is sitting on the trunk of a tree. But this is actually the southern flannel moth. It's large and covered with thick fur. Don't try and pet it if you don't want to go to a hospital. There are many poisonous thorns hidden inside this fur coat. Even a light prick can make you experience lots of unpleasant sensations. Other insects that pretend to be bees and wasps are hoverflies. They look like wasps, fly like wasps, and imitate a wasp's sting. But their coolest ability is copying bee buzzing. In reality, though, hoverflies are fragile, harmless creatures. Their ability to transform into bees is essential for their survival. And it works great. Many animals and insects are afraid to approach these skillful actors. But in the entire animal world, lyre birds get the title of the most talented imitators. These small birds, with large, beautiful tails resembling a lyre, live in Australia. Imagine getting lost in a forest far away from a big city. Suddenly, you hear the sound of a chainsaw. You don't see people, but the sound is getting closer. Then you hear the clicking of a camera shutter but there are no people with cameras around. Lyre birds create all these sounds. Thanks to all the complex muscles of their syrinx, they can mimic the sound of almost anything. Some people heard these birds imitating human speech. Also, they are good forest designers. Female lyre birds build domed nests on the ground, in stumps and caves. They usually lay one egg there and take care of the baby for the first six to 10 weeks. Let's go down from the sky to the ocean to see other tiny creatures. Meet Blue Ringed Octopus. This little guy looks so small and cute. Its bright neon color and blue rings are visible from afar. The octopus can easily fit in your palm, but it's better not to touch it. Meeting a great white shark may not be as dangerous as encountering this tiny creature. It's one of the most treacherous sea inhabitants in the world because of its venom. One bite can knock down a huge African elephant. The octopus is much more dangerous than a king cobra or a black widow spider because its bite often goes unnoticed. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the Atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. 
the speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying. All of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.